The game is about to start, and this is uh, the first 2v2 of the day, the only 2v2 of the day. <laughs> All right. And uh, 2v2 strategy is a bit interesting. A lot of the time it varies uh, very much from 1v1 strategy in the sense that a lot of the time before you expand, you have to do basically a one-base push or a one-base army to in order to hold the subsequent push from the opponent. Uh, and a lot of the times, one player will expand really early in the game, while the other player will commit to one base for a very long time, which does provide for some interesting matchups. And our teams are going to be a Terran and a Protoss versus a... Uh, well, I can't put the name tab up. Versus a Zerg and a Terran. So uh, I personally think that Zerg and Terran is one of the strongest matchups in 2v2. Uh, the combination of Marine drops and Speedlings, is it can be very, very deadly. So... We'll see, but you know, anything with uh, OP Terran is is always is always powerful. So this Protoss player is going to be doing just fine as well. We see standard openings from every player here. It looks like they're all just going for the basics, supply depot, starting the game. We don't see any immediate cheese, so perhaps we will see a slightly longer two v two. Just for reference, we do have RIT on the right side of the map here the Terran and Zerg, and uh, the Dragoons are the left side of the map, the Terran and Protoss. <laughs> Not much going on now. We do see a Rax out of each of our Terran players, so really standard openings. The first gas going down for the Zerg player, and we should see a spawning pool soon afterward. And with our Protoss player, we see the gateway into 14 Assimilator. Pretty standard, so... Everything is playing out pretty normal right here. We don't see much scouting going on other than this Overlord going out, but the first scout will get here for uh, Persona. He is going to check out this Terran player, and he will scout the racks. Uh, he is going to see basically nothing because the play is very standard. He's not going to be able to get a really good grip on what's going on. And at the same time, we see Finest, the uh, RIT Terran player, moving out to check out this uh, this this Terran player in Yoon. And he will see that... Uh, that he cannot get up the ramp. <laughs> he will see that it's just a barracks and a supply depot wall off. That's pretty nice. I like that. And the orbital's going down for both of our Terran players. Really basic standard openings. Nothing too complex, nothing too cheesy. So it looks like we're going to see uh, probably a one base, two base, slightly longer game. And the, the reactor going down for the uh, for Yoon. Reactor before Tech Lab, so perhaps some early Marines may be going into some kind of reactor factory Hellion build. But he will throw down the second rack, so I am assuming he's going to go for some kind of fast Marine push. Zergling speed and the Queen going down for the Zerg player. All pretty standard stuff. Basic uh, 14 pool, 14 gas opening. And the first factory is going down for Finest. So with no add-on, he's just building marines out of this uh, this barracks. There is no add-on yet. And uh, it looks like Yoon is going to throw down two more barracks. So it looks like he's going to go for some standard three racks. He might get the tech lab a little later, go for a slightly earlier push, and not get any sort of, uh, any sort of stim or combat shields in the early game. And the engineering bay going down for finest. We do see a sentry being produced by our Protoss player. No other tech structures just yet, but he do is getting two gas, so we can assume that he is going to tech up to something pretty quickly. And we still see Yoon producing Marines and another and a tech lab, so he probably will go for some kind of late stim, maybe Marine Marauder push in order to hold while this Protoss techs up to something a little more powerful than that. Zergling speed will finish, and the Roaches are coming out for the Zerg player. Stim starting for both players. And the scan here, he's going to see the the, fa the factory with the tech lab, probably assume some sort of siege tank tech. That's what I would assume. And some more marines just being produced here by Yoon. It looks like, looks like uh, Persona is going to throw down three more gateways, so it looks like he's going for a, a two-gas ga uh, four-gate. He's a little bit undersaturated right now, um, but he is chrono-boosting out some workers as we speak, so... That should really help. The two gas is interesting. The two gas four gate comes a little bit later, but it can be really powerful. And we do see warp gate finished and the first gateway being turned in. And this is some nice timing by the Protoss player, everything coming together right. And we see the Evo chamber going down for the Zerg player. And for Finest, 
We see the first siege tank in production. Do we have siege mode research? Siege mode, siege mode has been researched. So that's going to be really powerful. And Yoon is now getting combat shields and stim and two marauders. So he does look like he's going for a pretty standard three racks timing push, which which could be really strong in combination with this uh, two gas four gate that that uh, that persona here is doing. And he d he will move out to the low ground, killing the zergling. And the roaches are constantly in production. Two queens. But no expansion, and the, fr the expansion has gone down for our Zerg player, I apologize. And Protoss is just chilling, and these marines are getting ready, and it looks like they're, they're gearing up to either expand or push. It's hard to tell in a 2v2 because you can do it both, way, but both ways, but we do see the expansions going down for the RIT team. So unless Yoon and Persona do something really soon, they are going to be behind in the economic game. So if they're not expanding pretty quickly, I would expect to see a push out of them. And another siege tank is in production, and a command center going down. Yeah, these 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 expansions are going down completely uncontested. Uh, it looks like this team is just going to let that happen. But now it looks like they're about to move out with their one base push, warping in some extra units, spending all of their money, and they're going to move across the map. Looks like uh, Persona is going to probably take the watchtower or place a proxy pylon, but this Zergling will deny that worker. And as these forces move out across the map, um, looks like it looks like a pretty strong push. I mean, if if they get them in the right position, uh, the RIT will totally crumple to this push. A lot of sentries here. They need to start pushing. They're really undercommitting. Looks like they're moving around the backside. Um, we also see missile attacks coming up for the Zerg player. Is that a tech structure I missed? Oh, and the Baneling nest for Zerg. Very nice. <laughs> And we do see more Marauders coming out of Yoon, and another Orbital Command, so this really needs to be pressured soon before this base can get saturated. It would be optimal if they could kill it before the saturation, and it does look like they are going for a one base all-in, as there is no expansion from the, the Dragoon's team. And here comes Yoon up this side, let's go to widescreen, and the tank shells are going to do some damage, stimming up. The Marines are going to be a meat shield, but they're just getting eaten alive by these tanks. And the Guardian Shield going down with some force fields not blocking off too much. Looks like Protoss is going to be forced to retreat. Uh, some force fields holding off very nice, but he will lose uh, those two sentries? No, just the one. And he does cancel his proxy pylon. So that push was a little weak, but we have Yoon coming down in from the bottom here. With no vision of the high ground, he can't really do too much. I think he was relying on uh, Persona's vision while he was up there. And... RIT has successfully held these expansions. They're going to be very ahead in the ma in the uh, in the macro game. If we look at the unit tab, we do see that uh, they are oh they are not that far ahead in in worker count, but they do have that expansion and they are producing workers right now. So that is good for them. Having lost the one base push, uh, it looks like Drexel is going to fall back and expand. Good call but still a little scary because of what happened. And Yoon did build a command center during that engagement, which I think is a very good call, especially if you're Terran and you can do stuff like that. And tech-wise, we see almost no shifts in tech. It looks like everyone is going roach... Uh, the Zerg player is going for heavy roaches with the, the missile attacks, and it looks like Terran is going for some tanks, marauders, marines, and Yoon is pumping them out right here and trying to get this expansion going. We do see Yoon's factory coming down to the low ground, possibly to produce or scout, I'm not quite sure. And medevac's coming out, so it looks like Yoon is transitioning into a, uh, a marine marauder medevac play with Protoss expanding and throwing down the robotics bay and the forge. So He's going to be looking to get his upgrades and probably going into Colossus. Possibly Immortals. I think Immortals would be very nice against this composition. We do have siege tanks, Marauders and Roaches, so I think very, very effective against this kind of composition. So we'll see what we'll see what uh, Persona chooses to do with that. Concussive shells for uh, finest, so that's that's a pretty nice nice ability. But it does look like Persona is going to go into heavy stalkers, and as we know, stalkers don't do so hot against slow marauders. So uh, we'll see how that works out. The spire is going down for Zerg as he is taking a third base right here. Where is that spire? There's that spire, the littlest building ever. So it'll be infinity from now until that's finished building, but when it when it is, it does not look like there's any anti-air defense, although he does have the forge. 
no missile turrets, and almost no scouting information on what's going on uh, on the opponent's side. So it looks like they're just going to try and do a two-base max push, but the supply counts are radically different right now with uh, with the RIT team being about 30 supply ahead over the uh, the Drexel team. And the Spire is just about to finish, getting there, maybe 10 more seconds, and we see the Zerglings in production, and, ooh, we have a Terran Infantry Armor 1 and Weapons 1 from Finest. That's, that's going to be really helpful. We do see Ground Armor 1 coming up for our Protoss player. Interesting first tech choice. I do like that, though, as he did see a lot of Marauders in Siege Tanks. He knows that he needs to have more armor on these Stalkers to defend against that, so that is a very good choice. And we see six Mutalists in production. So uh, let's let's see. And it looks like we have a death push preparing in the middle of the map as as the RIT team is about to stream holy hell down upon. Oh, and looks like they have scouted. No, they have not scouted this drop. So will they scout it? Let's see. Well, I don't. And it does not look like he he scouted that drop at all. So that drop could be very effective, depending. So let's let's take a look at this. And this base does not have any workers. It's still good to kill because it may force some fear into the opponent, but uh, it's not going to do the kind of damage they were looking for. With this sensor tower being thrown down in the middle of the map, that's really nice. It gives them complete vision on the, the map surface when uh, when something's going to happen. And they will take out this expansion, but this army is going to get cleaned up by these mutalists and roaches. So was it worth it? Um, let's check it out. It... it no, uh, we don't have the units killed tab in 2v2s. All right, well, uh, it probably wasn't because almost no workers were killed in that engagement. It was only one hatchery, and seeing as they're on two base, fully saturated, whereas Drexel just seems to be getting their saturation up on their second bases, it's going to put them at a little bit of a deficit. We still see a radical supply difference as uh, the pro as uh, the RIT team is just kind of camping out here, holding position, waiting for Drexel to move out. And the scouting factory is going to see this doom force, but these Vikings are going to be able to repel that. And here come a couple of the Mutalists. The rest of them kind of flying around the map. Uh, did we get some damage in here? No, we did not get any damage in on these bases. We do see plus one weapons coming up, and the Twilight Council going down for Protoss, along with his second, third closet, second Colossus. And Yoon is looking pretty weak. He does, uh, he does not have a lot of units right now. He's trying to max up, but this drop in the back of the base is doing some serious damage. And he will pick up, but Yoon will... Oh, Yoon will not snipe the medevac. And nice drop, Micro, saving that medevac, losing only a few marines. Probably worth it in the end, because medevacs are very, very valuable units in the late game. Eight more mutalists in production for the Zerg player. And it doesn't seem like he's doing much harassment with these mutalists, which is interesting. You usually see a little bit more aggressive play with the mutalists. He's just kind of stockpiling them with his army. But that's okay. They have a pretty big lead. These Colossus could be really effective. With some nice force fields and catching the army unseaged, they could do some serious damage. But either way, it's going to rely on some really nice micro in order to win this upcoming engagement. We do see sensor towers going down all over the map. This is a very interesting strategy, and I like this in 2v2 for a reason. In 2v2, you always have to be prepared for harass. Every other, every other minute, a player is trying to do a harass on you. So if you have those sensor towers, that's a huge advantage. And we will see these mutalists coming into Yoon's base, and we see no anti-air here. One turret... And the mass repair on the turret, but it looks like it will go down to this clump of, like, what, 16 mutas, 15 mutas? So, uh, some worker kills here, and these medevacs will fly in, but they will not be able to do any damage against these mutalists. And the mutas are just going to ball and attempt to take out this starport, and they will get away uh, unscathed. Very nice muta harass by, by Popsicle Stick. And at the same time, we see the Terran Death Army pushing out here across the map, Looks like they're probably going to siege up right here against Protoss, cutting the choke closer and closer. With these mutas dodging in and out, it's really hard to maintain your army against the Terran front. There's so much ability to harass while pushing right now that I just I don't see what RIT is going to do. So it looks like an engagement is upcoming. These mutas are just going to ball here and scare him a little more. It looks like they're trying to get to max before they have to push, but I don't know if there's going to be enough time. And they are shelling this cybernetics core, so that is indication of just how under pressure Drexel is. 
these mutas are picking off tech buildings, and that's really going to hurt Yoon, who does not have as many uh, production facilities as he should at this point in the game. And these Vikings are probably going to do some serious damage to... Uh, to the Colossus Ball, and it looks like they are going to push out. Tanks eating up the front of the lines, Marines moving. We see the blink, and oh my god, so much is going on right now, but it does look like the tanks are doing a little bit too much damage for Drexel to handle, and oh man, it looks like everything is going to die as Yoon's army, as uh, Persona's army is completely destroyed, and Yoon's army is forced back into an almost undefendable position against this Roach um, Marauder <laughs> Siege Tank composition. We see Zerglings coming in. Uh, nice choice on reinforcing with the Zealots, but with the production facilities that RIT has right now, they're easily going to be able to overpower this small force remaining from Yoon. And we should probably see the GG any minute here. And there's the GG. And it looks like uh, RIT will take the 2v2.